On the eve of COP17, the University of Cape Town launched the African Climate Development Initiative, or ACDI, which is headed up by the first pro vice chancellor on climate change, Professor Mark New. This initiative creates a hub where media and the public will be supported and guided in all the research relating to climate change. This launch took place on the same day the Prince of Wales gave a speech at UCT on the urgency of dealing with climate change. The Prince endorsed the appointment of Pro-VC and the launch of ACDI. Now, I for one have been incredibly heartened by Cape Town University's decision to appoint a Pro-Vice-Chancellor for Climate Change, an idea which I can only hope will catch on elsewhere. Vice-Chancellor Dr. Max Price explained the significance of this initiative in Africa. The ACDI, the African Climate and Development Initiative, is one attempt to address this, to pull together research being done across the continent, to translate that research into policy proposals with, deep, with a deep understanding of the development challenges facing countries in Africa, and to empower our representatives negotiating the international conventions with science-based, locally relevant arguments. The ACDI is a multidisciplinary cross-university research, teaching and outreach program. It also networks extensively with other similar research units across the continent. It seeks to address the big challenges that climate change presents for Africa. Firstly, how to achieve the continent's development imperative without becoming a big emitter of greenhouse gases. And secondly, how to adapt to climate change that is unavoidable. At the launch event on November 5th, Professor New presented the aims and goals of the ACDI to the media and highlighted some of the key roles of this initiative. So ACDI is essentially the front end or a one-stop shop for all of the activities around climate change that are happening at UCT. So if somebody wants to find out about a particular issue or a range of issues, the place to come is the ACDI. Okay, well, I'd, I like to think of ACDI as an onion. Um, the first thing that it has to do is really get research activity and teaching at the university sorted out. And once we've done that, we need to then think about how that expertise uh, feeds out into the rest of Southern Africa. So build networks into Southern Africa and, and Africa as a whole. The ACDI's, one of the ACDI's role is actually to act as an information broker, if you like, that, that actually says, okay, here's a really technical, exciting result that's difficult to understand, and translating it into a, a form of words that, that can be easily taken up by government departments or, or businesses and so on. He said that although the ACDI has a number of different goals, collaborations are needed to ensure the success of this initiative in Africa. It's got a number of different goals. The first is to make sh sure that UCT, or, or to build UCT, UCT's expertise in climate change to make it a, real, a really strong research centre around climate change in South and Southern Africa and to make it a place where people from the rest of Africa want to come and do research and collaborate so that the UCT expertise is actually um, serves, serves African needs across um, the wider continent as well as South Africa itself. Professor New introduced two of UCT's top climate experts, Professor Bruce Hewitson and Professor Harald Winkler. Well, I represent the Climate System Analysis Group and we're probably one of the core uh, members of the consortium of ACDI. We focus strongly on climate change projections and understanding the physical science of climate and particularly on connecting through to societal interests around climate change. My particular focus is on mitigation, so also within that uh, group, really, we're the ones focusing mainly on energy and mitigation since I work at the Energy Research Centre. On the issue of COP17, Professor New says ACDI is in its infancy stage and would be focused on the COP18 to influence policymakers. It's quite a difficult job for any individual institution to play a role in, in the actual COP. What, the way that uh, initiatives like, like ACDI play a role is actually well in advance of the COP where um, some of the really innovative ideas that come out of the research that the university does, that happens even years in advance. So take, there's a trickle-down period, if you like. So we need to be thinking about what we want to do for the next COP, not the one in Durban. But all agree that they would still like to see progress made at COP17 for the nations to agree on a new climate treaty and governments to engage with the seriousness of the problem. 
will be really important that a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol is agreed. Um, and the European Union is particularly important in that regard. Um, finance is a really important issue and there's a report from a so-called transitional committee which um, is really being only blocked by two countries and I hope they stop doing so so that that can go ahead. Um, and then it's important that essentially the world agrees that we need to negotiate a new climate treaty. And that wouldn't happen in Durban, but I hope that that's at least initiated in Durban. COP is a step forward, it's not the end of a, of a progress. So my wish really is that the governments would actually engage with the seriousness of the problem. We have to make major changes by around about 2020 in terms of how society engages with climate change. And if we don't make a significant step on this uh, COP, we're going to have major challenges facing the subsequent COPs. So it's really an incremental step showing the seriousness of the government's commitment. Well, it's a real, real opportunity to really emphasise African issues, but at the same time, it is a global, uh, a global meeting. So, um, so there's a danger that African voices will be drowned out in some of the bigger debates that are going on, particularly around the new big emitters like China and India. Um, but it's an opportunity to really bring African issues to the fore, especially around adaptation and financing for adaptation, and also getting what's called the Green Climate Fund, which is the fund that will support um, green development, in other words, low carbon development, because without that, African states are going to really struggle to both develop and uh, well, to develop in a way that doesn't have a high carbon footprint. So getting those financial mechanisms right is the most important thing from an African perspective.